Good morning folks, it's Harrison with Mainly Acres Farms and today we have a special sewing video for you guys out there. So today's video I'm going to answer the top five questions that I get asked in regards to my sewing machine here. So let's jump into it. Question number one is what is the largest size needle and thread combination I've been able to successfully sew with using this sewing machine? Uh, so the largest size thread that I've used so far has been this uh, T135 thread right here. And what I really like about this is this is a government issued style thread that the military uses in putting together their uniforms, packs, and things like that. So you know that this is some wicked rugged thread here. And um, I haven't ran into any projects where I've needed anything larger. So uh, that's the largest size thread I've used. Now while I'm sewing with that thread, the needle that I typically run to is this uh, 20 over 125 size needle. And what I really like about these needles here, if you haven't seen my video where I was talking about uh, the different varieties of needles that I use on this machine, I'll leave a link right over here and you guys can check that out. But what I really like about this set of needles here is this is just a universal tip set of needles. Um, so it, it can really cover a whole variety of sewing projects. So you guys have seen that I've sewn leather uh, material when I was making dresses for my wife and things like that. So I really like these here and I picked these up on eBay for really cheap. Now I did have to order these from I believe it was Singapore or Hong Kong, somewhere like that. So I did have to wait a little while, um, but these are a really good deal, especially if you guys are just trying to see what works for you. I would suggest going with a deal like that. Now, uh, I was contacted by a subscriber of ours through the email, and uh, he has some larger thread and wanted to know if it would work with these machines. So hopefully, uh, he will be sending me some of that thread in the mail here shortly, and I will try that out. I believe it's a T107 that he's gonna be sending. I could be wrong, but it is definitely larger than the 135 that I'm using. And um, I already have a larger set of needles here, which is the next step up from the needles I just showed you. And these are the 22 over 140 size needle. Now I know that these needles will fit on the machine. I just haven't used these yet. So that will be in a video coming out here shortly. Alrighty, the next question that I get, question number two is, um, is there a material guide built into the sewing arm on this machine? And the answer is sadly no. There is no material guide that has little markings or increments across the sewing arm here. But if that's something that you guys are interested in, it's very easy to accomplish. What you want to do is you want to adjust your crank to where your needle is buried in the post over here. And then you're just going to take a measuring tape or um, a ruler if you have and put it up against your needle and mark that out. So I'll bring you guys in close and just show you how easy it is to make your little material guide on the sewing arm. Alrighty, so as I said, with your needle down inside of the post, you just take your uh, measuring tape or your ruler, whatever you guys have, and butt it up directly to the needle while it's in the post there. So now what you can do is take your marker, well this is a, a pen, but pretend it's a marker for this video, and you just mark off uh, half inch increments, uh, full inches, just whatever you're looking for and make those marks on your sewing arm here. So that way you can come through with like a triangle shaped file and um, etch those markings right into the metal uh, top plate here on your sewing arm and there you go. Another way that I accomplish uh, sewing straight lines on my project is using a nifty little tool like this right here. I believe this is called a uh, groove stitcher or a glover uh, stitcher. Basically what this does is it allows you to measure from this outside post here, there we go, measure from your outside post to your little stylist in there and you can actually mark out on your leather so that way you can have an evenly spaced and nice straight stitching. Now how this works, how I have this set up, is that you take your piece of leather material like such and you run this outer piece here 
along the outside and it allows your stylus to mark across the leather so that way you can have nice straight stitching. Now the cool thing about this tool is it comes with a couple different stylists. So the stylus that I have in there now is just simply a marking stylus. It doesn't cut any grooves and it doesn't mar or tear up the leather. Now if you were looking to cut some grooves in your leather so that way you can sink your stitching in a bit better, it does come with these groove cutters in there and you just install it right into the stylus head here and you go along the same way like as if you were marking a piece. One final way that I also achieve the straight stitching is just to simply take the old measuring tape or a ruler and using an old-fashioned pin making straight line marks on there and following that while sewing. Uh, there's a bunch of different types of uh, pins that you can use and marking it so if you wanted to mark it and kind of rub it off to come off of it then make these little pins like this. Now this is a silver color in here uh, and it's very bright when you mark it on material and you can see it real good and when you're all done sewing you can just simply take a, um, a washcloth and wipe off the ink and it comes off real nice and you know the other option is just a pin roll it on there but it's going to stay on there so if you're not using a black or a dark blue colored thread i wouldn't go with something like this i'd go with kind of the erasable type markers or pins Alrighty, so question number three, and I get asked this question on the regular, so you guys stay tuned for this one. So question number three is how do I adjust the stitching length and the pressure from the presser foot? And that's a real simple one, so I'm going to bring you guys in real close and give you an up close personal look on how to make those two adjustments. Alrighty, so this is how you do it. If you want to make adjustments to your presser foot in regards to how much pressure is pressing down, you adjust this nut right here. You guys can see there's a uh, nut on the bottom of the frame here that leads to this threaded post that goes to these springs right here. So um, if you want less tension on your presser foot, then back the nut off. If you want more tension with your presser foot, then tighten this nut as far as it will go onto this threaded rod, and it will in turn pull these springs down and give you some serious, serious tensioning when sewing. Now I found with sewing thicker materials like your leather or your foam or whatnot, you're really gonna wanna back off on this as far as you can go. And it's real easy to make adjustments here. You can take a simple pair of pliers like this and grab a hold of it and just spin it or you can get yourself the fitted wrench on there and go back and forth and make that adjustment so that's going to leave us to the stitch length adjustment and that is done with this one right here you guys can see there's a little spring on the bottom side and a nut for you to put your wrench on and if you take this up so in other words if you see this coming up 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 that is going to really tighten up your stitching um, and put them right dang near on top of each other and then if you back it out it will allow you to have um, larger spacing in your stitching. Now, there will be a point where you back it off so much where the machine will stop sewing, and the same thing is if you tighten it too much. So you're just gonna really have to play around with that on your machine on a test piece of leather, and that way you can really dial it in to where you want it. But that's real easy. Just this one here is for the presser foot, and this one back here is for the stitch length. Alrighty, moving right along to question number four, is how do I adjust the tensioning on my bobbin shuttle here? So I'll bring you guys in pretty close so you can see what I'm looking at here. This main outer piece here is what I'm calling the uh, bobbin shuttle, and then on the inside is your bobbin. It just sits right down in there. Put it back in there for you guys. So the only way to make adjustments to the tensioning here is via this spring that lies in this little channel here. Now, I've already showed you guys where you can uh, make minor adjustments by using either the first set of holes here on the top 
or the second set of holes here that is actually a little bit further away from the actual mounting screw in there so it lightens up a bit on the tension. So I typically run my larger gauge threads through the set of holes that is furthest away from the, spr uh, the screw that holds down the spring. Now there are a couple ways to play around here to get different results with the tensioning. So if you don't have enough tensioning uh, on your thread, one way to fix that is to thread your thread through the furthest set of holes on the outside, bring it underneath the spring, and then pull it through the closest hole on top. Now what that's going to do is it's going to kind of crisscross your thread across the spring there, allowing more surface area for the spring to come in contact with your thread, increasing the tensioning on there. Now, if you find that your tensioning is too tight, you can always back off a little bit on the screw that attaches to your spring. But you're gonna to wanna to be careful doing that and you're gonna to wanna to use a Loctite product on the spring to make sure that that spring and screw doesn't come off while you're in the middle of sewing because I've had that happen guys. Remove the screw, put a little bit of Loctite on there, not the red cap or not the permanent stuff, you want the temporary stuff and you just want to add a little drop on that screw. Don't coat that whole screw, just put a little drop on it and then screw it back in so that way you can adjust the tensioning with how far uh, in and out that screw goes to hold too. There's also another way to adjust that and that's to simply unscrew the screw and make minor adjustments in the spring itself. But you gotta be really careful because the spring is made out of the most flimsiest, weirdest material that is known to man and it's very easy to break it. So you're definitely gonna wanna make very small increments and bending the spring to get uh, to achieve the right tensioning in your bobbin. Now I know it's kind of all over the place with some of these ideas that I've suggested, but it's really a trial and error kind of a deal. You know, try it one way and see how it does, and if it doesn't work out, then try it a different way. And eventually, you'll get it dialed right on in there. And another reason why I gave a couple of these different examples on how to adjust it is because every machine is made differently. Even if it comes from the same manufacturer, there are some minor differences between different parts of the machine. So what will work for my um, bobbin shuttle here may not work for yours. So I would just try, like I said, if you, you're having problems with the tensioning too loose, then you might want to do the kind of crisscross um, threading action like I told you in the beginning uh, and if that doesn't work for you and it's still too loose then you might want to go ahead and take that out and make minor bending adjustments in your spring till you achieve that tight tensioning that you're looking for. Alrighty, so that leads us to our last and fifth final question, and that has been revolving all around the motor that I use for my sewing machine to keep everything up and running. So I wrote down some information here, and I'll go ahead and share it with you. Now, I did try to look up the model number and all of that for this specific motor that I'm using but it is an antique and I'm not finding anything on the internet that's matching with these numbers here. But I'll go ahead and share all the information that I can read off the motor um, and, and share that with you guys. So this is a 115 volt sewing motor. It's an AC-DC motor, not to be confused with the band now, and uh, it's 105 watts. Now, the name of the actual motor is called Quality Sewing Machine Motor, right? Generic kind of name. Uh, it did come off of a Singer sewing machine. I was able to verify that. And the model number or the make number, I'm not really sure which is which, is 174667 space E dash RP. Now, like I said, I tried looking up that model number on the internet and I wasn't able to find anything. So if you guys were to go out on an engine search or on eBay or something like that, I would just type in a Singer sewing machine motor 
and maybe type in, you know, 115 volts, 105 watts and see what that pulls up for you guys. So I hope this video has helped a few of you guys with some of your questions out there. Keep them coming down in the comments below. Also guys, I've been working behind the scenes on setting up our Etsy store. So if you're interested in buying one of these custom spool holders or some leather arts and crafts and whatnot, head on over to our Etsy store and check it out. I still have some more postings that are gonna be going up here shortly, but I just appreciate all you guys' support by going over there and checking that out. All the information is gonna be down in the description box below. And as always guys, take care and spend time with that family.